Hello, viewers. I just want to say good morning to you, wherever you are watching from. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are watching from and the time you are watching. And I just want to welcome you to this another episode of the update. Today's episode is going to touch your life and will change your life. And as you all know that on update, what we do most is just to encourage one another and to see how we can help one another from what we have been called to do. And uh, sometimes you are, you are called to do something, you don't know how to go about it, you don't know what to do, uh, you don't know how to do it, you do it, or you don't know the right tools to use in doing it. And when you get to the update, you realize that is a is a time for you to change way of doing certain things in your life. Take, for example, your cell phone or your uh, your 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 computer or any device. It will sometimes at some point in time tells you you need to update yourself. And when that update takes place, it makes the application to run better and faster and more efficient. And that's the why that, that's the more reason we are on this particular program just to educate one another. And I know uh, the vessel whom God has prepared for you today, who happened to be our guest for today, would you know by the time you should begin to speak, you our life we taught your life, and by the end of the by the time we round up this program, you will know what you will definitely have idea of what. You need what you need to do and to make your life more better than the way it used to be. On this on this particular program today, I have in the house. She's a pastor, a mother, a very dynamic woman of God. Uh, all the way from Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Pastor Rosemary Houston from RCCG House of Praise, Las Vegas. Good afternoon, ma. Oh, good amen, morning. Amen. <laughs> good afternoon. I mean, it's morning here. It's still morning here. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. <laughs> hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. You know, I, I give God glory for this. You know, every time I have a meeting, I always, first thing I always do is just thank God and give glory for everyone who is present because in this day and age you know it's just god the grace of god that is sustaining us the bible says it's by his mercies that we are not consumed so we are just so i'm so excited that you know we have the opportunity of this day today is a gift indeed so congratulations to everyone for this morning for yet another day and the fact that we are here the fact that this show is going on that means god has a great purpose for each and every one of us this morning so, so thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Pastor Femi. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor Florence, for giving me the opportunity to uh, be here this morning and to share with you whatever the Lord has or the Holy Spirit has, you know, laid in me to minister to whoever is listening. You know, based on my experience, uh, as we all know, times are changing. Everything, like Pastor Femi said earlier times are changing things are different um everyone is adjusting to one thing or the other but again again and again i always say we thank god for everything the bible says in all things we should give thanks so we are thankful for today we are thankful for the, even this generation we are thankful even for 2020 a lot of people are anxious for 2020 to go but we are you know grateful to god for this time because we know it's going to work out for our good by god's special grace Amen. Yeah, when we look at the the word the word of the, I, I I'm, I'm I'm kind of I want to ask you. You know, because the at the beginning of the year, you remember everybody has a kind of plans and things that we want we we have to do at the beginning of this year, and all of nobody has ever expected that things that we are seeing right now we ever come up or we ever happen in our lives. That's right. So when that is when you when it happened in your area, how what 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 happened? What, what's your reaction? What was your reaction uh, 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 when it happened in your area? You know, um, 
I'm sure everyone's experience is pretty much the same. You know, at first, I sent a message uh, to a Facebook group, uh, WhatsApp group once. It was uh, with the church dancing on watch night service. You know, everyone was dancing, celebrating. Uh, 2020 coming, everybody had something to say. Double, a year of double vision, a year of abundance, a year of increase, a year of 2020 vision. You know, no one had an idea what 2020 actually had in stock for us. So, you know, when, of course, when everything started out, you know how it did, it started out trickling at first, oh, it's in China. Then later they said, oh, it's in uh, New York. Yeah, then it's in this, you know. So nobody was really expecting, you know, we were actually heading into a pandemic. But it took everyone by surprise. It took the church by surprise. It took the schools by surprise. It took the, uh, uh, the government by surprise. It took the whole world by surprise. So um, again, you know, in the past, we're always ministering to, you know, to ourselves and to everyone to embrace change, embrace change. And, you know, it's not something anyone likes to do. And we always felt like we have an, you know, we have a, a, a choice whether to change or not to change. For example, you know, and even in, the, in our, the lives of our family, in our homes, if we have to change something, school for the children, we don't really like it, but we have to do it you know or we don't have to do it there's a choice there um if it's changing your job you have to you know you make a choice do i want to change my job or do i want to stay where i am so in other words in the past we're used to change when we had a choice of what to do but this year the change just came in we have no choice everybody has to adjust to you know whatever the day has to offer whatever the circumstance has to offer nobody is uh, used to pandemic you know, pandemic, when we, we read about it, you know, pandemic, when it happened, how many years ago? Many, many, many years ago, before most of us were born. So, but now we are actually experiencing it. And, you know, we, Pastor Femi, we all had to embrace change, whether we liked it or not. The churches, all of a sudden, we never dreamt in, even in March, we didn't dream that churches would be closed and we'll be operating this way. I remember um, my job, actually, my manager, he introduced Zoom and introduced what we call, um, uh, uh, what's it called again? There was another system, Teams, he introduced. And oh my goodness, everybody was upset. Why is he introducing for us to have meetings? We were so happy with uh, using our cell phone. You can be in your pajamas, you can be in whatever it is and be on your cell phone and you know, go through a meeting. But then he decided, you know what? And this was uh, sometime at the end of last year. He said, no, we're gonna do Zoom now. I need to see every, everybody's faces. We were so, everybody was upset, even myself. I was like, I have to learn something new, a new technology. <laughs> so, you know, it was, yeah, it was, the, it was somewhat devastating. A lot of us complained. So, especially the older uh, generation, we didn't want to learn anything new. But who would have known that this year, Everyone, it doesn't matter who you are. Mama or oh, mama is using Zoom. Papa is using Zoom. Everybody is, you know, updated in technology, whether you like it or not. So again, back to your question, it's, you know, embracing change. This is a time to embrace change. We don't even know about tomorrow. Something else might come up tomorrow and we have to switch over to something else. Mm. We just have to put, position ourselves for new things. You know, the future is a little bit somewhat uncertain. Of course, the only certain thing we have is the word of God, and that's what we have to embrace. That's the something we know that is stable, that is constant, that will never change. But everything else around us is changing. Praise the Lord, and God will help us. You see, what, what, another thing that I, I, I realized is there is just like, sometimes no, we, we are not, 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 not that everybody is prepared for, for it, but somehow, uh, we kind of tend to, uh, with the mind of improving our system, maybe for, you know, churches, you know, some churches are like, okay, uh, we have, we have uh, uh, online streaming that we just do as a secondary me me means of broadcasting our service. You know, not that we, we not that as, as a main, main thing that we, that, and all of the sudden, you know, what we see as secondary turn around to become our <laughs> our primary means of yes. of uh, broadcasting our service because yes. if we don't 
it, it, it's like somebody said it, it, it's like just with, i i want to pick from what, what you change now changed us <laughs> the yes. change, yeah change now change us from what we used to know to what from from unknown to another thing that we just discover all of a sudden that we have to learn uh, uh, you know just yeah. as fast as that because whether you like well, it or not you know whether you like it or not, you don't. You don't. I think you would. You will appreciate your manager now. You know. Yeah. You know because what she was doing that then was just maybe uh, being being on on her own, to just uh, as a, right. uh, in, in just to manage the team and everything. I want to see the face, but not knowing that. Well, I think I'm used to this right now. Oh, okay. My manager so it was last time. So. Yeah. I was told, I mean, I, I remember when I, the first time I used Zoom, somebody said, um, I said I want to have a program that I will include somebody. And somebody said, well, why don't you use Zoom? I'm aware of uh, uh, of Skype. I'm aware of, uh, even with my, with my children, when the, the school closed and they said they have to use Google Meet, they, you have to use Google, uh, this one, you have to use that one. Everybody started using one thing or the other. And I mm -hmm. sat back and I realized nothing that this year has brought to us then uh if as long as we continue to look at the the, the bad side of it which is the covid itself but there are other good things inside of it that we oh, yeah. that, 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 that that if only we sit down and look into it we will see that it it also comes with blessings as well oh, yeah, because yeah. many things that we 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 never thought we ever happened or can ever happen in the world business mm -hmm. government everybody will believe government work has to be done in the government office and nothing can change, move it from that place to that to, to an, another place uh business owners will say uh, my business will not will not move from here to that to that place even if i'm doing anything i'm only i don't know i, I, I only do do with online people online business and all of a sudden, this thing just kept us back home. Everybody started working from home. When you, got, when, you, when you find yourself at home and start working from home, you realize, wait a minute. If I'm not glued to my computer before, I, I have to know how to sit in front of the computer and position myself, you know, uh, and see how I can, how I can preach message in a, a true uh, imaginary people, imaginary congregation. Whether they, are, whether they are sleeping, whether they are listening, whether they are doing something else you don't even know <laughs> you, don't you, know. Have to, you have to stay focused like that okay i i i i'm i'm think, I, I believe everybody just listening to me we say you say praise god nobody respond nobody is responding you know <laughs> you can see all that kind of things in life and how do i balance myself in you know to all this kind of life and some people that are doing business that are, they don't have idea of how to transact business online this, I, this COVID gave them idea whereby they, they have to say, okay, if I have to make living for my business, if I have to keep my business on, I have to move everything back online. And the same way with the government, government realize that the workplace is becoming more dangerous for people. And the only way to do it, just everybody go back home. But in going back home, how do we go back home and still not compromise what we, what we have uh, 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 that, that the, the, the files that, are, that that should not be exposed to properly. How do we do it? They have to come up with ideas, including the yeah. internet providers that are, are providing internet. They also upgraded themselves. Why? Because everybody just yeah. it, when they saw the crowd, their system crashed, and they, they, they realized that you no, know, if fifty people have been using this system before, all of a sudden five hundred people just came on the system. We don't have enough now. capacity to accommodate everybody. So what do we need to do? Right. We need to also expand our system and upgrade our system, in which yeah. means update cut across everybody. Either you are doing right before, or you are not doing you are not doing right at all. You have to update yourself in one area or the other, including families that are including families as much as families are concerned. You see, everybody goes, you know, father wake up in the morning, children doesn't even see their, see their father. Father is already off, off work. And by the time he will come back, they are already, already sleeping. Mother and husband and wife are not having time for themselves. But what do you do when you find yourself, everybody just locked up in the same house? First week, pass, second week, pass. 
anybody say, okay, month we are and a month later, month yeah, later, a month later. Here. whatever we have not been able to resolve as a family, we must resolve it by force. Exactly, that is so true. That is so true. But there's, you know what? There's something that you actually mentioned. You know, you said when preaching, you don't know who you're preaching to. Yeah, but the word that you mentioned is focus. You have yes. to be focused, and that's yes. exactly how it is. I believe you know we all need to be focused in whatever is going on out there right now. Mm -hmm. If it is your school work, you are in school, you continue to remain focused. Whatever the vision is that God has placed in you, still remain focused. Don't yes. get distracted by you know things that are. A lot of nobody actually knows tomorrow. Nobody mm -hmm. can predict tomorrow. If you listen to the news today, they'll tell you this is going to happen tomorrow, and then tomorrow comes, it doesn't happen. Even the we the weather, a lot of times they've predicted this year it's going to rain tomorrow, and everybody can see the gloomy weather, the clouds. Tomorrow comes, there's no rain, you know. But does that stop? Is that supposed to stop? You know your plans for the next day? No, it should not. So, you know, in everything that we're doing, I strongly believe focus is the key word. Being focused, do not get distracted by things going on around us because then we'll lose it. If you are, if you are a worker in church, keep being a worker in church. If you are a giver, keep being a giver. If you are a prayer warrior, keep praying and even more. If you are, you know, whatever it is you're doing, you know, as a mother, as a child, as a mother in ministry, as a mother, even in your home, you still need to be focused, focused on the children, focused on what is going on around you. You know, in order for us to, you know, the Bible says, having done all, you stand. So that having done everything, everything that has happened and is going to happen in this season, at the end of it all, we'll still be standing and we'll be strong also. We won't say, oh my goodness, I lost focus. That's why I lost my home. That's why I lost this. That's why I lost that. So I, you know, I strongly believe again that we, this is just a season. Firstly, we have to adjust to change. Secondly, we have to be focused. Mm. Do not lose your focus. Mm. Praise the Lord. I, 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 and I totally agree with that. When you look at the that, that word focus, I I just want everybody to just maintain maintain that word. Matt, uh, what will you say in this word whereby we have uh we deal we're dealing with inequality between men and women okay. what what would you say you know from you know uh, uh back in africa where they have kind of different traditions back, back in the bible where they have you know okay i'm losing the volume where, where where in africa where we are having different traditions where in uh, uh, in the church where we I are? I lost my volume. Oh, can you still hear me? Hold on a second. Uh, 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 people, all to all our viewers, we believe you. Uh, you are you are still hearing me, and I uh, and I know uh, everybody is still here, hearing me. Hello, Pastor Fami. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I can hear okay, you. Okay, I'm not hearing. I'm not able to hear you. Let me see if uh, my technical can come. Can come take care of it. Okay. The volume. Can you hear me? So, can you, can you hear me now? So, uh, uh, why why do you work? Why do you are still working on that? Just let me know when you when you when you begin to hear me back. For those of you that are watch, that are watching, okay, Pastor Femi, we want to make sure it's not on um, your side because we're not. Um... Uh, yeah, my volume is up here and I can hear you clearly. I can hear you clearly. And uh, so while we are still waiting on the uh, volume to be fixed, 
you know i just want to make sure that there are some things that everybody is doing in in life and you are just in such a way you are thinking what else do i need to do for myself for my life to get back in order i i, I want to i want to encourage you that the pandemic is not a problem even though it's a, it's a general problem but is a is a problem that you need to see yourself uh, 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 creating a solution you need to see yourself working out something for yourself because the problem that we all experience, uh, we are all experiencing right now is not to bring you down but it is but to bring you up and when it brings you up to a place you begin to realize that where you were before is different from the way you are at the moment so what are you need what, what do you need to do at this time of pandemic uh, or what you are doing at this part of pandemic will determine what your result will be in 2021 because you are not just only to look at the problem everybody is saying yes there's a problem we all know there's a problem but out of that problem there should be a solution that you need to create yourself that you need to you know, come up with yourself and that will change you whatever result that you get becomes your own result so because you are unique do you know there are people that are making millions even in this time of pandemic yes. there are people that are still surviving and doing very well in the time of pandemic so don't sit back at home or anywhere and believe whoa everybody every, every, oh pandemic is all everywhere everything there's problem all over the place no 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 but you have to train yourself teach yourself bible says that, that it's only this the, the slogan man complain there is there is land out there you are not supposed to complain about what is out there but make solution for what is out there and be what and let that problem push you further roll over the storm I, 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 are you back man yes i am back okay. i am back That's, now you know i'm just going to add quickly to what you said you know yes. in uh we all know the scripture in romans 8 28 I'm, i don't know if you already quoted that when i couldn't really hear you but um god said all things work it out for good you know like we mentioned earlier things around you may be changing you know some of us even lost our jobs that is a change there in itself. But one thing that stays stable and constant is the word of God. It says all things work it out for good, good to them that serve the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Mm. So that means no matter what it is, I love that scripture because no matter what it is, it always comes back in your favor. That mm -hmm. is the word of God. Mm -hmm. So like Pastor Femi was saying, you know, whatever it is, this second pandemic, is supposed to bring us forth, bring us out, you know, wherever we've been in, I don't know about, you know, and I pray that is your story also. My story, there's so many things, you know, I've gained from this pandemic, from staying home. I've been staying home for how long now? But there are so many things that have been revived in me. There are so many things I've said, oh my goodness, it just dawned on me. There are ideas that have come up. There are things that I see new, uh, newly, that I never saw before. There's some things I even believe the Holy Spirit is able to minister to us more clearly. We are able to see better, you know? And a lot, again, a lot of things the word of God says pertaining to good and evil, we are seeing it now. The word of God is coming to life, even in this pandemic. And I pray we all tap into it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, see man, uh, the question I was about to ask the other time, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, today, program I dedicated for uh, to women in ministry and women matters. You know, uh, uh, what would you say about uh, gender, particularly about women inequality in our society? Yes, that's a very good topic right there. You know, in I was reading something. It's just a coincidence. I was reading something to do with you know, salaries and the average salary of uh, the African-American household, the average salary of uh, the nation as a whole, working adults. And, you know, as I was reading, I was surprised that even in some races, 
in those days, when you read, you know, I always try to keep up with stuff like that. You read uh, or you see the uh, uh, Caucasian male is, you know, in the highest brackets. Then you have the Caucasian female, then you have the African American ma uh, male, then the, you know, uh, African American female. That's the, you know, hierarchy and how it went. But, you know, I was just looking, I think it was this morning, early this morning, I was just doing some research and I saw, I said, my goodness, the gap is actually, uh, um, what's that word? It's kind of narrowing in the gap between the male and the female, you know, when it comes to salary. So in other words, I do believe things are changing, you know, and I thank God for that. I'm seeing, even in ministry, I'm seeing more women of God coming out and being more bold to speak up. Of course, it depends on where, you know, the culture, it depends on the, you know, it's people still bring, bringing culture into ministry, unfortunately. I was reading um, also this morning, the story and last night, the story of Deborah. <laughs> she was a judge amongst the people of Israel. And, you know, while reading her story, I was thinking to myself, I said, you know, I wonder how, you know, as a judge, how people were receptive to her advice, being that she was female. But do you know that even as she was a judge to the Israelites, God still saw great significance in her. Others around her may not have seen that, but God saw a great use for Deborah. She was also created for such a time as hers. It says that God wanted to deliver the Israelites. Yes, he used Barak. But then Barak could not do it without the help of Deborah. You know, so Deborah, even for her time, was a very significant woman. We know the story of Esther also. So in this day and age, no matter what culture has come in, tradition has come in, uh, race has come in, we as women of God, we should know where our calling is when it comes to the things of God. What does God say about you? What does God say about the Proverbs 31 woman? What does God say about the women in the Bible? God sees great significance in every woman. It doesn't matter your color. It doesn't matter your height. It doesn't matter your experience. When I got called into ministry, my main focus was, you know, go to school, finish. You know, I got my bachelor's degree when I had to get, I had a, you know, a vision. When I had to get my master's degree, okay, after doing that, get married, get a job, you know, husband is working also. God had a completely different purpose for me, you know? So at that point, when God called me into ministry, I was just like uh, Abraham, like Moses. <laughs> I said, me, who, me? You know, God, how can you use me? And I see that a lot with a lot of women nowadays. When you're called into a role that has probably been dominated by a male, and you feel like, oh my goodness, me, I'm a woman. Or you called into a role that has been dominated by maybe another race. You feel like, oh, I'm a woman. As if being a woman is a setback. A woman is, being a woman is not a setback. Mm. Hallelujah. God, mm. yes, God created us, each and every one of us, for a divine purpose. And because of that divine purpose, his name has to be glorified in our lives. And we are fully, more than fully equipped for what God has called us to do. So I, you know, in the, uh, my uh, pastor knows that my husband, in the job I do is predominantly Caucasian male. So I have to step forth. I have to, of course, work harder, do things stronger, try to show myself, you know, that yes, I can do also. I'm always trying to prove myself. You know, because God has given me this position, I need to stand tall, stand out and stand tall. We can all stand out and stand tall in whatever it is God has called us to do. And um, being a woman is not a drawback. Of course, we were kind of, some of us came from a background where the woman is supposed to be, uh, you know, just lean back and not, you know, move forward, not this, not that. No, we're not, of course, we're not supposed to take over the male role in our households. We are still supposed to, you know, respect our husbands and know where our husbands is placed in our homes. But at the same time, uh, this is where in the day and age, the era where there are so many opportunities for us, so many opportunities. There is no excuse why we, should, we can't make it. There is no excuse why we can't, you know, achieve our goals. There is no, there's no reason why we cannot aim high and make it to that point. If you open, if you start reading women of God, I always tell them, 
you know, start reading, you know, hearing about stories of other women that are making it, gain from them. How did they make it? You know, you start seeing also some, you know, different attitudes that they have. You can also pick up those attitudes also. You can pick up ideas from them. How did they, you know, where were they and where, where are they now or where are they going? What took them to that point? You also can do it. And I encourage every woman, whatever vision you have, aim for it. Do whatever it is that will take you to that point. This is the day and age. There's no limitations for anybody. You know, I, I, I strongly believe nowadays uh, the, you know, idea of she's male, she's female, I think it's gradually fading away. Even back home, in, back in where we come from, uh, uh, countries that we come from, where it's so, you know, male here and female there, it's all fading away. So, and I thank God for that. But there, there, uh, there is an illustration that I kind of, um, uh, I gave somebody yes, about a few days ago, and I said, you know, when you have been locked down for too long, like a board that has been locked, locked that's in the cage, and uh, and all of a the sudden they open the cage, but if you know for board to, to come out and fly away, but only only to realize the board still remain in that in, that, in the cage. Why? Yes. If, with the door open, you still see the board remaining in the in the cage because. He, it has, it has, I mean, he has a, uh, 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 he, he has a sense of family, uh, he, he's familiar with, the, with that place. He has conditioned itself to that place. So the smell, the aroma, the thing that, he, that, the, 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 that, that, that the bird knows or, or understand is only yeah, being yeah. in the cage. So even when you, push the, you still want to come back to the cage, there are some, there are some people that you will, that even with, with the, what is going on in the world, Instead of them being motivated to see women doing, you know, as they used to say, what women can, what the man can do, a woman can do as well. But there are some women that will come after you and say, "Don't even know that that's not even your place. Don't even know that you are not a, a woman. You must not be. Uh, it must not. You know, we come. They, they come after one another to just even say that's not a woman's role. So in that sense, what do you? What will you say to women that are already conditioned themselves? They they swallow, they they immerse them themselves into traditions rather than seeing innovation and transformation that is going around the world. Yes. You know, I, you know, unfortunately, there's not an easy answer for that because some people have, you know, just like you said with the bed, I, I love that example. You know, where you open the cage and the bird is still thinking that he's conditioned to be in that cage. You know, I've seen a video once, the same thing where some dogs in life, this is not even a saying, they showed some dogs were barking, the gate was shut. You know, so they were barking at the dogs on the other side. The other dogs were also barking to, you know, the dogs on the other side of the gate. And when the gate opened, none of them went at each other. They were still barking at each other. Like, you know, if, if only this gate will open, I will come and get you. The gate was open but they were all <laughs> still staying on that side. So, you know, it's, 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 you know, unfortunate that sometimes, you know, when someone is conditioned by either tradition or, you know, they are acclimated to something they're used to from, from childhood or something they've seen over and over to break that habit or to break that thinking, that uh, mentality is always very difficult. You know, and that's why we're here to encourage, you know, and empower women. A lot of women need to be empowered. A lot of women need to be encouraged. You know, the, the, the veil has to be taken off of our eyes. If I myself, there are so many things I'm seeing, you know, in the, it, sometimes it's in the back of your head, you cannot do something. And then all of a sudden something will snap and say, wait a minute, I can do it also. You know, I have everything that is needed to accomplish this task. So it's, it's, it's prayers also that, you know, women's eyes will be open. Women are empowered. Look at, we're seeing the government now. A lot of people were surprised uh, what, last year. When was it? When, you know, you saw a lot of women taking political roles. So things are changing. Everyone is like, oh my goodness. So this, you know, this can happen. Now we have someone who's elected a vice, uh, vice president. Uh, we were looking at her story, uh, Pamela Harris, you know, we're looking, she, she was nominated, let me say. 
we're looking at her story when she was a child. And, you know, as a child, she was also talking, you know, her mother from India. Nobody could have imagined at all that this woman will be standing where she is today. And that's just the story that is in there that, you know, we can do, the Bible says we can do all things. You know, it, it does not say men can do, women can or cannot. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. So nowadays, I, there's, for our children, for our daughters, there's no, there's no limitations. Another thing is we have to be example. If we are showing our children that we are limited in this area, we can't make it pass because you're a woman. Your daughter is also, that's where we got it from ourselves. Your daughter is also picking it up too. That's, oh, I can't make it any further than this. A lot of the women you see that have made it in the public light now, like I was saying, uh, in, gov in uh, um, uh, government positions, they'll tell you that, you know, they came from this, uh, another country, or they came from a poor background, but somebody in their life inspired them that they can do it. They can, you know, they, they can be better than where they are today. They can be better than their parents, you know, and there was a push. There was always a push. They'll tell you who pushed them, who encouraged them. So now it's the same thing. If we run across women like that, you push, you encourage, you empower them, you know, with, you know, with things around them that will cause them to succeed. You know, this is no longer the day or the era of I'm a female, not even the time of saying I'm a black woman. I'm a black woman, so I cannot do this. I mean, I have accents. I cannot do this. We are always looking for excuses. I'm a black woman with accents. So there's no way I can make it to the top. That's a big lie. You know, I had a manager once um, uh, from uh, what country? Senegal. They told us at our company this day, we've been hearing of her name, the CEO, she's in another state, CEO, CEO, CEO. And then all of a sudden she came and I said, oh my, uh -uh, this woman is from our side. Oh, this is a Senegalese lady, the CEO of the company, a medical company. She came in, her accent was so strong. I was thinking in my mind, I said, maybe I'm the only one that understands what she's saying. But did she care? She did not care. One day I sat down with her, I said, how did you get to this, you know, position? I, you know, I'd like to know, how did you, you know, step up this high? She said, Rosemary, I was, I started as a CNA. She said she was a CNA. She just came from Senegal, not that long ago. She said she started as a CNA, but she had a vision. She said, I'm not going to remain at this position. One day I'm going to own my own company. And that's how she started jumping, taking, you know, all the opportunities she had until she made it up there. And that's one person that actually inspired me too. So, you know, um, I, I strongly believe this is not the time for us to hold back. There are no more excuses. We thank God for that. There are so many open doors. There are great doors open for women in this day and age. People are becoming more receptive to women in high positions. So yeah, who yeah. else would be up there than us, the women of God? There is, a, there is another problem that some of the women are facing. Uh, some, do, some, some lack motivators, some lack yes. encouragers. Like, um, you, you have women that want to, that have aspiration, but they see their, their husband or the men around them see them as competitors and they would do everything to ostracize them. Hmm. To, they will do everything in their capacity or in their power to make sure that the voice is not hard. So what do you do after you've done everything? You know, like those people, you know, when they see a little bit more of challenge, you know, they are, it's not, uh, um, my husband is not encouraging me or my husband is seeing me as a compet competitor or, or you become a threat. To, to them because believe if a woman has money than you do you you, you know uh, that means um, uh, you become a don't you become a nobody or you become uh, less of a man or, or you know that so they, they still boil down to you know our traditions and everything so yeah. for what do you, you do what do you have for those kind of people Ah, Pastor Femi, again, it is tradition. <laughs> like you mentioned, going back again to tradition, you know, places where we grew up, the father was the breadwinner in the household. Uh, mommy was the one in the kitchen. 
And, uh, you know, so, um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of times are changing. Times are changing. And I've seen a lot of men who were actually that way. And all of a sudden, because of, sec because of circumstances and situations, they've, you know, switched over. And they've accepted that, you know, it's no longer the, you know, the man is supposed to be the one making the money and the woman. Nowadays, we are seeing a lot of households where the woman is the breadwinner. I mean, there's just nothing, there's nothing you can do about it. If there's a job that opens up, the woman gets the job, the salary, the offer is higher than the husband. What are you supposed to say? Are you supposed to say, my husband, no, we are this level. So, you know, I'm not going to accept that job. I believe that the woman accepts the job, accepts the position, but then it comes back to your household. How are you also treating your husband? Because a lot of times I see when there's an issue, when the man is not ready to, you know, uh, uh, um, agree with the fact that the woman is making more money, is when the woman also starts to rub it in his face. So I believe women, we need extra humility. If mm. you are making more than your husband, you need that, you still need that extra humility. He still deserves that same respect as if he was making more than you. It's no more, money does not determine, you know, your hierarchy in the home. You are now the head of, money does not mean, the more money you make does not mean now you are the, you know, the head of the household. Now you are the decision maker. No, you still have to hold your husband in that level that he deserves to be. You still need to treat him like the king in your household. There's a saying out there, if you want to be treated like a, a, a queen, then you treat like a king, you know, or vice versa. If you want to be treated like a king, you treat her like a queen, both ways. So this day and age, every, there's no, I don't think there's any choice there, except if you choose to stay on the lower bracket, if your husband is still trying to make it up there. This day and age, the new norm of the day, a lot of our, our, our women nowadays are in the medical field. And the medical field, by God's special grace, is giving higher compensations than most other jobs or fields out there. So um, every, everyone just has to adjust. The husband has to play his part. The woman has to play her part also. Work in unity. Um, don't let money be the obstacle or don't let we always hear that money is the number one reason or finances is the number one reason why a lot of homes are breaking up today but it shouldn't be that way it shouldn't be that way money in the house increase we pray for money we pray for increase we pray for prosperity but having done so we also want to have it in sound mind we also want it to have it in good health you know, we're not supposed to be frustrating ourselves, getting sick from stress just because of culture. One person is making more than the other or because of pride. Everyone has to humble themselves. The husband must humble himself. The wife also must humble herself in order for it to work. Without humbling themselves, you know, it, it's, the, it's just the grace of God that will sustain that home. We, with, the, with the word humility in the house, as, you, as, as you are, for those of you that are watching, you, you can hear the word humility in the house. It goes on both ways. Husband has to humble himself. You or your wife have to humble yourself. And in which we'll be, we'll be able to uh, have a common, a common goal to achieve. Because the world is changing and the life that we are living in demands that you know, income should not just only rest on one one side, because if one door locks up, the other one should be able to open up and continue what what is going on. Now, let's go back to the ministry issue. Now, in, in, in I mean, back in those days, you know, whereby men men are the only one, you know, you know, being in the forefront, ministering, doing everything. What would you say the role of the uh, of, of women in ministry you know where you have your husband and uh, you know what 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 define my role as a woman amen amen and you know i i pray for all the women listening it's not just when we say like the question pastor femi asked it's not for if you are a pastor only a female pastor or the pastor's wife no it's anybody all the, yes, 
all the women in ministry, I understand. Our, our role, you know, our, that's one thing. Our roles are not so clearly defined. I'm always looking, you know, for a book. What book can I read today that will make it clearer what our roles are in ministry, like you said, Pastor Femi, in ministry. And there's not really any book that really stands out and says, this is it. Every woman has her own special calling. Every woman mm. has their own special calling. And for that calling, it is only the Holy Spirit, only the Holy Spirit that can be your light, that can direct you. It's only the word of God that can direct you through your ministry. Every day is a different thing. Just like we were talking about a uh, pandemic. The way ministry was last year, what we're praying about, so this year is a different prayer point. I'm sure everybody that prays, is a, <laughs> your prayer point has changed. Yeah, we're praying that we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll, be, uh, we'll all stand strong through this time of pandemic. We're praying that we'll all stand strong at the end of it. Um, a lot of us are now fasting more than we fasted before. Unfortunately, a lot of us are worrying more than we've worried before. Um, but one thing, like I said in the beginning, that always stands the same for everyone, no matter what calling, where God has called you to, is being uh, uh, in the word, standing strong in the word of God. Read the word of God. What is the word of God saying pertaining to you in this such a time as this? Do you know as a woman you are called for such a time as this? You're supposed to ask yourself, why am I here? What does God, what is my purpose? I know I'm not supposed to be here as one of those that are crying, that are depressed, that are frustrated, worried. No, God has called you for a purpose in this time. So going back again to your question that, you know, uh, um, uh, ministry, a woman in ministry, how she should proceed, you just need the Holy Spirit. I've been saying that over and over. The Holy Spirit needs to be your partner, your senior partner. He needs to guide you in every step of the way. You need to be a prayer warrior, not just a praying woman, a prayer warrior in this. Prayers, constantly. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous woman in ministry availeth much. Your prayers will change situations. Your prayers will, will cause this pandemic to cease. Praise the Lord. So this time is a time to be more ingrained in the things of God. That is what I have been sharing with those around me. Be more ingrained. Be more prayerful. Be more sensitive in the spirit with whatever it is, whatever you're going through. Even as a woman of God in this time. You know, one of the things I'm very, um, very into, let me say, in this day is, are the children. That's where God has pulled, God has kind of, you know, Directly, let me say, pulled me out of the regular ministry I'm used to, to the ministry of children. This season, it is the children that my focus is mainly on because that's what, where the Holy Spirit has led me to. Why? Because the children in this day and age, they are facing, first, they are, they are losing some of their heroes. We just heard of some, one of them that just uh, passed away due to cancer. The children were, you know, depressed. They were not depressed, but they were not happy about it. They are facing uh, racial injustices. They are knowing, hearing more about racism. Uh, they are hearing, they are staying at home. They've been at home since April. Who has heard, who has, we've never been through a time like that where the children are home for such a long time. So they themselves, they are trying to, you know, know how to, as much as we are trying to figure out this time, they are also trying to figure it out themselves. So again, going back to your question, just be sensitive in the spirit. God might be carrying you from one area to the other area. God might be keeping you in one area. There's always something that God wants you to do at different times. Don't just say, oh, I'm a wife. I'm a, from Africa. I'm a woman. I'm walking. That's the end of it. No. Hey, God wants to use you. God has a purpose, a greater purpose for you in his life. And, God, and by God's special grace, you will achieve that purpose by the guiding again of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit direct you. Let him be a talk to him. There's one thing our pastor always says. He's always saying, you know, talk to the Holy Spirit. Greet in the morning. Greet him. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, my senior partner. You ask for the presence of God to go with you wherever you go. This is the day you want to be at the right place at the right time. Praise the Lord. 
And I pray the Holy Spirit will continue to minister to each and every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. See, while you are, while, while you are talking about the children, uh, which, because I was about to ask you the same question about what your passion is. And since you may mention all that as, as, as you know, your passion, now, what do you see with the way, uh, with the thing that is going on in the world and what our children is hearing, you know, what will you say to the mothers out there? How do we balance our children with the society that is, you know, and what is going on in the world these days? Yes, yes, yes. You know, you, like we said in the beginning, every day is different. You, today, one thing happens, tomorrow, another thing happens. So many changes going on. But in this day and age, we really, really, really owe it to our children to be completely engulfed in their lives, engulfed in their thinking, what they are thinking. This is a time that would determine, we have the different generations. We have the Z generation, the big boomers, the this. Every different generation plays a different significance in this time. If your children are the younger, the smaller children, you have to be there. Don't think they're too young to understand what is going on. You have to be explaining these things to them on their own level of what is going on. Some of them have fear. They can't express it because they don't have the words for it. Make sure you are completely ingrained in that child's life. What is going on? What are they thinking? What are they seeing? And what are they hearing? If you have teenagers, oh my goodness, definitely you have to spend time. If you never spent time with your teenagers before, this is a time to sit down with them. Because guess what? They are hearing things online. They are seeing things on the TV. They are translating the way, you know, they are seeing what they are seeing. They are also hearing from people. They are hearing responses. If you go on uh, some of these uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, wherever it is, you see something happen. That's where your child actually learns of an incident. Guess where they go next? They go to comments. They start to read the comments of what other people are saying, other people's mind, how people are interpreting what the circumstance is. And then, you know, they come back and that's, that's what they settle with. So you need to know what are they hearing? What are they seeing? If they're talking about uh, uh, racial injustice, they're talking about racism, you have to know how to break it down to them. You have to go back to the word of God. What does God say about you? Your life does matter. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. God loves you. Being black, you have to, you know, break it down to them that they are not inferior. We are not the inferior race. Amen. So this is a time I strongly believe we need to, even as a church, we need to embrace our children. We need to talk to them more, more than you talk to anybody else. More than you even talk to, to, to your spouse. I hate to say that, but we need to, you know, be involved in their lives. Make sure they are keeping busy with the right things. You know, the, their churches also, in this time of pandemic where there's no, uh, their churches are closed, there has to be an avenue to reach out to the children also. We don't want to lose them in this time. This is a time the children, you can either draw them closer to God or you can lose them. Children are asking why, if there's God, why is this happening? If there's a God, how come this happened? How come my, my hero, my star, how come he died? How come They're asking those questions. And if their parents are not there to answer them, they're going to go online. There's internet everywhere and type it up. You just type up a name and everybody out there in the world, their opinion, just, you know, is just out there and they're reading. So um, again, uh, as a parent, relating to the children more than ever. They are the children of the pandemic. I used to tell my son, I said, in 50 years time, you'll be telling your children or your grandchildren, oh, I was actually your age during pandemic because it's going to be something that marks history in their lives. Mm. So we need to play that significant role as a father, as a mother, make sure what you are telling your child to perceive what they are seeing online because they are seeing a lot of things mm. when you look at when, when you look at when you look at the way children are um uh with the statistics of, of what what's going on how many people that are, that have uh, that have contacted the virus and everything and i was watching something about a few days ago when when they, when they were talking about uh children i mean the children that want to go back to school 
And the parents were saying, no, I, we don't want, I don't want to, I, I don't want my children to be in, in school. Well, we don't want the, the children to be in school, but the children said that we don't want to be in school. And the, the, there's kind of a, a kind of conflict of uh, uh, ideas and interest in that area. Now, with what they, what is going on, that are things that the parent kind of living behind in which area we as parents, we need to update ourselves, uh, uh, upgrade ourselves to the place whereby we'll be able to communicate with them at the level whereby they will be able to understand. There are sometimes that sometimes we want to deal, deal with them, we deal with them in the, uh, uh, in the way we were dealt with, you know, when we were uh, 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 during our own time, using the, the, the whole system to, uh, to deal with children of these days. And they, they don't feel it. They don't, they don't see themselves in it. So they see it as an abuse. So yes. in such a manner, with what is going on right now, don't go out, don't do this one, don't do that, that one. It creates a kind of a, a, a fear in the life of those children. What some children that doesn't even know, you know, they, find, they, they, they don't even understand what the pandemic is right now. But because the parents have not been able to settle down to tell them what is actually going on, except for the parents, don't just go out, wear your mask, wear your this one. So they say it as you know, what kind of bondage am I in? Why am I going? Why am I, why we are not going? Out? Why we are not doing this? Or why 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 is everybody running away from one another? So what would be what what I, I want you to just say a little further about how parents can actually integrate their children into the system without abusing them because discipline is very very important in the life of the student amen amen you know uh we always pray for wisdom you know god will grant us wisdom because you, yeah. you rightfully said something our upbringing was from back home there's a way you know we were brought up of course we're brought up with cane and everything was open you go and tell your neighbor my mom beats me. The neighbor too will bring out her cane and continue from where mom and dad stopped. So that's a completely different upbringing than you know the children now. And I think it's very very important for us to know this. Like I mentioned earlier, the different generational groups. We have Generation X, Generation Z, Baby Boomers, Generation you know Y, and all that. The children that we have now mostly go into the generation Y, or is it generation Z? Generation Z and generation Y. That's what it's called, millennials. Their own upbringing, their own way of life, their own thinking is very different from ours. Um, someone mentioned a, a while ago at a meeting, she said, even when we ourselves were younger, there were so many things we were doing that our mothers were saying, ah, my mother would never have allowed me to do that. I yeah. would never, you know, what they themselves were doing. There's a way we dress. There's a way we did our hair. Our parents were like, uh-uh, this, uh, this is not a good the hairstyle for a good child. But now we are, you know, rocking those hairstyles anyhow. So we have to understand the different gaps. There is a gap between our, not just the fact that we are a different age group, but we are also from a different culture also. Let me give you a quick example. There was a time I was at a, a, a gathering with family members and uh, my brother-in-law, I always love this story, he was telling the, the, the he, we were all having a meeting with the, they were in their 19, 20, 21 years old. We were all talking and chatting the older with the younger. And you know, my brother-in-law says, you know what? Um, no, one of the kids asked him, why is it that the African parents want the children want us to marry, when we get married, marry another African person. And he was like, yes, it's good, you know, because we know their parents, they know our parents, we know the culture. You know, these are all the things, of course, in the back of our minds. Yes. But one of the kids said, you know what? I, I in kindergarten, all my friends were, there were no Africans in my kindergarten class, in middle school, in high school, in college right now. So I'm only familiar and friends with people from different cultures. So in other words, when it's time to get married, I'm going to get married to who I'm more familiar, you know, the people I'm more familiar with. And you know, that just resonated on me. And that's where I got, you know what, this is a completely different time. We can't be imposing how we were to how they are now. 
But at the same time, there are some things we still have to implement in raising a child from the way we, you know, from the way we ourselves were brought up. There are some things that will just never go. But we have to also know where to draw the line. If this, if, if whatever it is we're instilling in them is not helping them, then we have to pull back and see. If we're over enforcing something, you know, you should, you must do, uh, uh, do your hair this way and otherwise if your hair is not grown and around like this then you know uh, is you're a bad boy or if you talk to a girl you're a bad boy then the day they talk to a girl they will never come to you so this is a time also as much as we are you know we are the leaders in their life at the same time we are also going to embrace a somewhat level of friendship with them where they can come to us where they can share anything whatsoever they can be free to share anything. In those days, if you have a boyfriend, you, you can't even tell you dare not let your parents know. Not that I'm encouraging it now, but if you have a child going in that direction, you will know that they will easily come to you and say, mom, there's somebody. Then at that point, you can jump in and you know, minister to them or talk to them. And otherwise you will never have the opportunity to talk to them. So things are very different now. Parents ought to be friends. It's okay if you, you know, in public, you are with your child and you are behaving like a friend. Oh, you know, push them, all oh, this, that, that. There's a reason behind it. It's not because you are looking for a friend. It's because you, are, you want your children to be comfortable with you. They need to be comfortable to, you know, anything. If a child in their school is going through something, they can easily come to you and say, mom, this child is contemplating uh, suicide or this child, and then you know how to jump in. Otherwise, we'll just be, if you are separate from your child, you don't know anything going on in the life of your child, then you are losing it for yourself and also losing it for your child. So with our coronavirus, sorry, I came out of that. With cor in this time of pandemic, we have to explain. We need to find time to explain to the children, this is what is going on out there. We understand, I understand it's not fair. It is not fair that you have to stay home. It is not, I myself, I don't want to be locked in. I can just imagine if I was a teenager, and locked up in my house for how many six months and then school comes you are not going back of course you have to you know you have to have apathy you have to sympathize with them i understand it's it's really not fair it's not a good thing but the reason why we are doing this is for the safety of yourself the safety of everybody else around you praise the lord yeah so you know there are a lot of things that you you touched earlier and about this being a friend to your child you know because Many, many, many at times we just believe I'm, I'm a parent and I, I don't have to be a, I don't have to be a friend. Uh, you, you, you do whatever I say and uh, whatever I say is what, what goes. And uh, most, most of the time it doesn't go that way because those students just look at you and say, you know, they won't be able to get close to you to open up. Yeah. They won't relate. So they will relate with, they, you, know, you will have with your children will just be both and Boss and uh, and the subordinate or parents and 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 uh, and, uh, and and children and you know so there won't be any friendship between you because there are sometimes you have to step down from being a parent to become a friend. That's right. They can jump on you. They can sneeze on you. They can do everything because that's that's only only way you can know what is going on in their mind. Even sometimes they will bring up some issue that. In your in your in your in your heart, your your heart already is kicked already, <laughs> but you must not show it that hey, this is you are doing this. You know you have to come down to a level where like, you control yourself, so they must not see it, see it in your face because next time you will shut down the the, the ability to to have confidence in you to swap to to, to to um to to discuss serious matter with them, so. Yeah. That's just only thing. Even when we, when, you know, uh, with the all the with, with the issue of all this racism that, that that we have around around us, you know, there are some things that we we need to change our tone, our our tones in in such a way. Uh, only let them know what they, they have all the information out there, but some of the information that they have are negative information, and yeah. they are expecting you to either support their idea or come up with another better idea. So whatever you say to them, they kind of go uh, go with it, and it can either go well or bad because you have already planted something in them. If you make if you if you if you if you say bad thing about other other race, 
and that you have already planted something in them. If it's not, if it sync with what, what they have already, idea they have already, it's going to be a, a long time before it can be taken away from them. That's why children always believe their parents and the teachers in school. Yeah. Because they believe that they, they are custodians of, of wisdom and that they can trust. So parents must come to a place whereby they have to uh, 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 see their children as their friend, their first friend, and uh, the children will be able to open up to them yeah. at any given time. Anything happened to them, no matter how terrible. I know in in, in our in our own uh, my own time, we dare not even talk about any. Uh, uh, we don't we talk. We don't talk about sex. You don't talk about anything that has to do with yeah. Uh, some even some changes in your body. You don't even talk about some. Sometimes you cannot even talk with your parents with, with there. But this day, they apart from the fact that some of some reasons have been taught in school, you cannot confidently ask your parent, parent what because of we see it as taboos or, or uh, as a shy stuff, things that have not been discussed in the house. So saying it in the house will become another thing. But parents must come to this, to the level. No matter information you think you don't, you are hiding from your children. If you don't tell them, they will find it out from other, other places. And by then, yeah. it will be too late for you as a parent to actually be okay. able to, uh, to, to correct or to amend. Just before we leave, just before we leave, I have one or two more questions for you. During this time of pandemic, what have you been doing? You know that has that has been probably different from what you, what you used to do before. You know that has been kind of new thing that the pandemic brought to you. Uh, just like okay, okay, okay. Uh, while why while at home working from home or everything, I just discovered this. Okay. Yes. Praise the Lord. You know, I've, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's really been a lot of things uh, we had planned, like everybody else. This was the, supposed to be one of my best years ever. We, we had a trip, we had a cruise to go, was canceled. It was my year to go to Israel. Uh, pastor said, my, you know, you must go to Israel this year. And, you know, he made everything happen for us to go to Israel by God's special grace, of course. You know, so we looked forward to so many things this summer. You know, things I can't, you know, I mean, I don't need to start mentioning. But um, because of this pandemic that happened, this is the first time in my life, I'd say, where there was just a full break. Because I came to this country, as some people know, I've been in this country since I was 17, 18 years old. I've been working, working. I've always had a job. I've always been in school. I've always, you know, busy, busy. Once I start working, I started working full time. In, you know, no stop. So sometimes in the back of my mind, I say, ah, this pandemic, I believe God in a way also intended for me to take a break. So this is something, you know, sometimes you ask people, what are you, you are up today, what are you doing? And when somebody says nothing, to them, that's a good thing. Do you understand? It's a good thing because there's nothing to do. And that's just the way I feel. I'm being honest in this pandemic is that there's just nothing to do. There's no plan. Uh, no. Okay. Next week, let's go to this uh, family. Let's go to the here. Nothing really, but just sit down and hear from God. That's where I am right now. That's what it is. a change in my life. Something I wasn't used to, but now I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm not enjoying the fact that it's because of pandemic, but the fact that I'm home, I'm able to read more books. I'm able to uh, hear from the Lord. I'm reading, you know, I'm, I'm reflecting. Let me put it that way. I'm kind of reflecting on myself. Who am I? Who have I become after all these years of being in this country and working? What am I? Who am I? Where is my mindset? And um, that's, I'm, I'm in a way, I'm enjoying the glory of God. God is present, you know, as long as we're his people, he's present with us. And he's revealing to us new things. His God is taking opportunity of this time of, his, of believers having to stop to do also what he needs to do. So I hope that answers your question, but no, it's, uh, no, put me my I, I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, 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 see, that everybody has a kind of things that, you know, uh, you know, as I, as I said earlier, there are people that 360 
365 days in a year, uh, they always on the road traveling and everything, one program or the other, one event or the other, one thing, you know, that they're, they're constantly, they're constantly on the move. But with the pandemic right now, kind of give them a break to be at home. And while they are home, you know, other, other few days, they, you know, because somebody who's always active like that, they, 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 won't, they, won't, they won't just sit down at home and just, and, and uh, are not doing anything. You know, like the way you said it now, you, you find a time to, time to relax more, pray more, read more, you hear from God. That, that's, that's, an, that, that's an achievement right there because you, you know, a, if, if, if it's the same way you used to do it, maybe you might not be able to do, hear more of this or do more of this, but you, can, you, you have more time to actually get more of this. Do you know that even after the old thing is over, you won't want to let go because right now you're probably planning. When the old thing is back to normal, I, I still have to retain this, this particular part of, part of this thing that I've just gained. So, and I, you know, that, that has been, that, that become part of your update that you, you don't used to have before. But God created that space for you to make sure from now on, this is, this is going to be addition to what you, you will, you, when you get back to your normal routine, you, you will have to create time for this because there are some things that you have to let go to, to actually put that one in, in, uh, in place. That's the same, same thing I, I'm telling and I keep, I, I, I'm encouraging everyone out there what you need to find your own comfort or new innovation, new idea that yeah. has to be with you. You know, this time will not last forever. Find mm -hmm. something, wait on the Lord and let God reveal to you. The, the time has come for us to actually reevaluate ourselves, to rediscover yourself. If you, the fact that you lost your job does not mean you cannot, you cannot create another job for yourself because you lost that job so that you can actually create your own job, that you can actually create your own business, that you don't need to wait on somebody. Probably, probably God has been speaking to, some, speaking to you. All this why you have excuse. Oh, you know, because I, 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 have my, I have my job, I have my job, I have my job. And God has to close that job now so that you can actually sit down and focus on this. What you are, what, what the kind of stone that you left on thought, it can come back to become the chief cornerstone of the house. That, That's right. God can start you up with a business. God can start you up in a ministry. God can start you up, you know, ideas. Maybe you have to, maybe you have to go to school. You have, maybe you have to do some things. Maybe you have to rediscover yourself. Maybe you have to sit down and, and reevaluate yourself. Maybe the marriage that is not what is now probably working very well before. God is saying, I, I put both of you in the same house right now. Nobody is going out until you guys solve the problem. <laughs> that is true. That is. And things will start working. Maybe relationship between your, you and your children that has, that, that has not been uh, aware before. Now you can sit down at home and see what they have been doing, what they have been missing. And the day your child will tell you, oh, this is the best time ever. You will know that it definitely that, 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 that is making a sense a, or a statement. All this while you have been going up and down, going up and down, we have not been seeing your face. Now that you are, you are home right now, we, can, we, we, are, we are actually enjoying our parents. Yes. And that's to tell you that you need to create time for mm. these children. You need to create time for this particular thing. God might be saying, I, I've not enjoyed you in a, lot, in, 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 a long, in a long time. Now, sit down. Let's talk. Let's, let's see. Let's have yeah. that. Let's have that this thing. And that is exactly what you are, what you are achieving this, yeah. this particular time. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is, I want to tell somebody this, this afternoon or this morning or this evening. You are in this situation so that you can see what God wants to change in your life. It's only God that can put round peg in a square hole. Because if we have to call the excesses that you have in, I mean, around, 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 around that, until that round peg will fit into that square hole or square peg in, in the round hole. He will just find a way. He, you're just, God just need to re, try, trim you up. Trim you up and put you in the right place. And all what you just need to do, rediscover yourself. Mm. Sit down, sit down, look around and see what do you have me to. And while you ask that question, guess what? 
God will tell you what exactly you need, what, to, what, 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 what you need, what you need to do and how to go about it because everything will come plain for you. Don't forget to write them. Don't forget, as the way Abacock said, said it, don't forget to write them down and pursue them. Run after it because by the time this whole thing will be over, all of us will come out and we give account how we have spent our whole year or uh, the whole time of pandemic. And you'll be able to have something to say to us. Well. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you for watching. And I also want to thank our guest today, you know, for being here. I can tell you, she really downloaded everything that, need, that, that, that we needed. And I, I want to say thank you, Ma, for coming. And we are blessed with what you have shared with us today. And I know definitely God will continue to uphold you, uphold your family in the mighty name of Jesus. We really, really appreciate you for your time and for what you are, are still doing. And I pray uh, when next we, 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 we have you again, um, we'll have more word, more powerful word from the Lord from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, and I pray. God thank, bless you. Thank you God so bless much. Florence and the children also. Thank you so much. Uh, I will. I will surely deliver your message. Thank you so much for coming. And until I see you, all our audience, next time, next week, and I God, God will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Have a wonderful day. Remember, this is an update. And Amen.